This is the Consciousness Competence Matrix. It's been around for about 25 or 30 years and is normally used in a training context. It highlights the four stages of learning that we go through when acquiring a new skill. As a starter, I'm going to step you through the stages to give you a sense of what it's really designed for, at least at a high level. I'm going to use an example of skydiving. As an unconscious incompetent, I'm unaware that I don't know something or don't have a particular skill, like skydiving, and I probably don't care. If I decide at some point that I'd really like to get into skydiving, I then become fully aware that I don't have the skill or the knowledge to be a skydiver, and probably now do care. I am now consciously incompetent. Through learning and practice, I build the knowledge and skills to skydive safely and with no anxiety or fear. I am now consciously competent. By the time I reach stage four, I am so good at skydiving, I don't even have to think about it. Properly preparing for the jump is automatic. I am now unconsciously competent. I like to look at this model in a different way, using it as a framework to adjust our behavior to ensure the automatic responses we have developed over time still really work for us. Over the years, we consciously develop practices that work for us, looking other people in the eye when speaking to them, having a firm handshake, smiling or laughing at another's jokes, or more recently, looking at our blackberries when they buzz to demonstrate our responsiveness to clients, colleagues, and family. Over time, these conscious practices become habits. We do them without thinking, and they really work for us. We are now unconsciously competent, right where our brain likes us to be, so our conscious brain can focus on other things. We may find at some point that some of these automatic practices no longer work for us. For example, we're told and we sense that we're getting sidetracked from focusing on a task at hand or we're being insensitive to others we automatically grab our vibrating berries. Since it no longer works for us, we are now being unconsciously incompetent, at least from our own perspective. Our objective now is to get back to being unconsciously competent, but this time giving our full attention to the person we're face to face with or staying focused on a project or task that we're trying to concentrate on. Our problem is that we can't just go back there directly. There's a wall between being unconsciously competent and unconsciously incompetent and it allows things to go through in only one direction. To get back there, we need to go through stages two, three, and four again with the newly desired habit. Our first step is to become aware of ourselves doing the behavior we're trying to stop. Often, that means engaging a colleague to tell us when they see us doing it, since most of us are not very good at catching ourselves at the beginning, especially when the habit is so ingrained. After a while, we become more aware and catch ourselves as we are doing it, or just after. We can now start to change the behavior and stop looking at the blackberry in midstream. Soon we begin to catch ourselves just before we do it, even though we may still feel the urge. We are becoming consciously competent with respect to that behavior. Finally, it becomes second nature, and we have reached that stage where we either ignore the urge or we don't even feel it. We have returned to being unconsciously competent with respect to that desired behavior, right where we want to be, at least until the behavior no longer works for us. This path takes approximately 21 to 26 days of active behavior modification, so don't beat yourself up if you haven't mastered it over the weekend. Give it a try. Pick a behavior you'd like to change, Contract with a partner to let you know when you're exhibiting the old behavior and reward yourself each time you do it right. Stay at it for three or four weeks and you'll have a new habit.